here are 10 really hard lessons that I wish I had known before I started my business. Hi, I'm Paige of Paige Ray Creative. I'm the owner and founder. We make standout visuals, photo and video for creative brands. And we also have fun doing it. That's what I always like to say is we have fun here. So I want to take you through the 10 big lessons that I've learned over the 10 years that I've been doing this. I've been in business for myself for almost a decade. Wow. Where does the time go? Couldn't tell you, <laughs> but um, here are the 10 biggest lessons that I wish I had learned or at least known about before I went into business for myself. Number one, if you're going to leave your job to start your business, whether it's already booming as a side hustle or it's just an idea in your brain, you're going to want at least six months of emergency bills, if not two years in the bank before you leave that nine to five. I know that's a tough pill to swallow. Something that I see people doing online every day is waking up and saying, oh, today is the day I am quitting. I can't stand my boss. I want to chase my dream. So I'm going to do it. I'm just going to quit and I'm going to start my business. And I see people doing that without a huge plan behind it, which is not the end of the world, but you're going to want that emergency savings because it's not all, it's not all fun and games. We've really glamorized running a business, especially on Instagram. And it's really hard. It's not fun all the time. And there is a lot of struggle. There is a lot of worry, especially the first few years. It's hard to feel like you're on steady ground. So that emergency savings can come in real handy. I know it's a I know it's a hard thing, especially that transition period where you are maybe starting your business on the side, but you're staying in that nine to five. You feel overwhelmed. You're busy all the time. But at the very least, get that six months in the bank and the time you'll know when you're ready to leave the nine to five and go into your business is you'll have that at least six months saved, but you'll also be matching your salary with the revenue that you make from your side hustle that you want to turn into a business, right? Once you match your salary with how much money you make there, then you'll know it's time to transition, especially once you have that six months in the bank. So that's number one. Number two, when it comes to clients and booking clients, do not count your money before it is in the bank. I know it's really exciting when you've got sales calls on the books, you've got inquiries in the DMs, you've got a bid out, a proposal out. You might even have a client that has said yes, but it's not time to get that sparkle in your eye. It's not time to count that money as yours until it's in your bank account. Now, what you can do is if somebody has signed a contract, said yes, signed the contract, and you've sent out the invoice and you've sent out the terms for the invoice payment, that is something that you can put in, a, in, an, in an expected revenue column that's perfectly fine, but keep that separate from your revenue column um, when it comes to tracking how much money is coming into your business. I don't mind keeping an eye out for what I'm expecting to come in versus what I actually have coming in. But if that contract isn't signed, that money's not yours. And even when that contract is signed, there's a lot of wiggle room there. So before, before you count that money, make sure it's on its way to you to begin with, right? Um, it will save you a lot of heartbreak and a lot of heartache because I've seen too many photographers and creatives have somebody say, yeah, I'd love to work together on this project with you. And they say, oh my God, great. And they get excited. They they think, okay, we're going to do this project together. This is how much I, I told them it costs. This is going to be so great. And then they never hear from that person again. And to be truthful, I it is so rare to have somebody sign a contract and not follow through with it. That's not really where I worry. Once the contract is signed, then I can put it in the expected column. I don't mind doing that. But if they haven't signed a contract and they've just given you a verbal yes, it's not your money yet. Don't count it. <laughs> stay cool, stay calm, and wait for the contract to be signed at the very least. Um, number three, do not worship the big names in your industry. It's tempting. We do this a lot on Instagram. There are a lot of thought leaders out there with a lot of really amazing expertise that they share with us all of the time. And that's fantastic. But they're still humans. Do not worship these big names, right? You never know what's going on behind the scenes. And the funny thing about the big names in our industries is that we tend to have this thought, like, especially when they're like, they're, they kind of feel like a mystery or we haven't ever met them or seen their back end. We kind of have this thought that there must be something special that they know how to do that maybe you can learn. Like maybe they have this secret to success or to an industry. Uh, they don't. They don't. Actually, I've seen a lot of the back, I've seen the back end workings of a lot of big names and there's a lot of mess there. Not, not that that's bad. It's the way this, their system works 
for them. And that's not a bad thing, but it will surprise you just how human your heroes are. And it won't disappoint you, but it will make you realize that you're not as far removed from them and their talent as you think they are. Don't build them up in your head because all that's going to do is push you away from your own goals and achievements, which might be in line with what they've done. You're not as far away as you think you are. You're better at what you do than you realize. You're more capable than you realize. And you're more in line with those industry leaders than you think. So if you put them on a pedestal, you're just going to keep telling yourself you're not good enough. You're not good enough. Don't do it. Don't do it. They're human like you. I promise. I promise. All right. Number, number four, this is basic sales and marketing, but nobody will buy anything from you if you don't tell them what you're selling. That sounds like stupid, obvious, but I see a lot of creatives who are really hesitant to sell and you shouldn't be. You should be excited to sell. You're basically telling people what you're really good at and how you can change things for them or help them or fix them. And you don't want to shy away from that because the whole point of running a business is that you can solve a problem for somebody. But if you never tell them what problem you solve, then they can't buy anything from you. That's my dog. He's shaking off. I think his other human's about to walk through the door. <laughs> number five. Is this number five? Wait, one, two, three, four, five. Number five you will lose money at some point in your business. It will suck. You will go, why did I do that? Um, but don't be so hard on yourself. All of us lose money at some point. All of us. I don't know a single person who hasn't lost money in some way, shape, or form. And sometimes it's a few thousand dollars. Oh, there's my dog getting comfortable. Um, this is a very real, real YouTube channel. Um, Sometimes it's a few thousand dollars, sometimes it's a few hundred, sometimes it's even bigger than that, sometimes it's even smaller, but don't spend too much time beating up on yourself. Every Everybody loses money at some point, it's not the end of the world. Um, number six, whether it is financial, emotional, or physical, owning a business will always be some kind of roller coaster. Like there's no point where you're just going up, up, up like this, though this is reversed. There's no point where you're going up, up, up like this in business. Um, it's always a this situation. It's always around. You can never really be sure what's going on with the economy, with buying habits. Everything seems like it shifts with the wind and sometimes it does. It's not the end of the world. If you stay light on your feet, if you are willing to move with those changes, you're going to be fine, right? Don't be afraid to evolve in your business as you need to, but know that all of this is typical. It is absolutely a roller coaster. It's rarely a straight lineup, right? Number seven, whatever, if you are a service-based entrepreneur, and I, I really do believe this goes for products too, but whatever price you start at, will inform your future prices and revenue for years to come. So if you start off at bargain basement prices, the cheapest in your industry, you will continue to be the cheapest in your industry and you will continue to struggle for a very long time right through burnout. If you start low, you might gain a few clients because you're undercutting your industry, but then the only people who will ever come through your door are clients who want to pay almost no money. You'll end up burning out. So don't even start there. Learn how to price your business, your offers, your pro your products. Learn how to price profit for profitably right from the beginning. And don't be afraid to charge for it, especially if you're skilled. Don't just because you're new to the market doesn't mean you're new to your skill or craft. And you, the, and it certainly doesn't mean that you can't charge for it just because you're year one. So don't be afraid to price profitably. In fact, you have to, because you're a business. If you don't turn a profit, your business is not going to be in business for very long. All right. Number eight, it's important to have a support system when in times of need, right? Um, there are tons of people that you will be able to lean on. This is one of the things I love about having a creative business is that creatives support creatives truly. And so when somebody is going through a rough time, there is somebody to support you. There will always be that. But I also want you to pay attention to the people that celebrate your wins. Those are going to be um, your longtime business besties. Those are going to be the people that you form long-term relationships with people who are there to celebrate what you win and pay attention to who doesn't celebrate with you when you have a win. That'll tell you a lot too. All right. Number nine. Um, this goes back to don't put your heroes on a pedestal in the industry. No one here knows what they're doing. No one here knows what you're, they're doing. And when I say that, what I mean is 
some of us might be making educated guesses, right? And some of us might have skills that are pretty, pretty well honed and we might have connections in the industry that get us places. But no one here really knows what the outcome of any of that's going to be. So for the most part, we're guessing. We're all guessing. Even the people who are leading your industry, they're often guessing. And you will see, sometimes they will guess very, very wrong. But don't be afraid to risk things a little bit. It's not like anyone here really knows how to like, none of us know how to build a 100% a certain path to success because that's just not possible. It looks different for everybody. So take some risk, try some different things, make some good guesses and have some fun along the way, right? There's nobody that you're looking at or looking up to that like knows some kind of secret that you don't know. No one here really knows what they're do doing. It's just that some people are more confident in their guesses than others. Some people are more educated in their guesses than others but it's all a giant guessing game, right? And you know, no one has it totally together. So give yourself a little bit of freedom and grace and take a deep breath. This is just back to that roller coaster. This is just quite the journey. And that's actually number 10. The amount of time that you spend hating on yourself is directly correlated to the amount of time you're going to spend struggling in business, right? The journey of entrepreneurship is directly a reflection of the journey of loving yourself. And there is no exception to this rule. The more time you spend beating yourself up, hating on yourself, talking down to yourself, saying negative things to yourself, the more time you will spend struggling with almost everything. It's not worth it. So know that if something isn't working, if you put something out into the world, into the market, and it doesn't do well or it's not received, it's probably, it's definitely not that something's, nothing's wrong with you. It's either something needs to be fixed in your product or something needs to be fixed in your marketing. It's always one of those two things. So give yourself a little bit of grace. As a bonus, um, I, there are a few things that I want you to forgive yourself for. Or give yourself a little bit of grace with. These are things that you don't know that you can do that I'm telling you right now that you can. Number one is if you are going to have a newsletter, you do not have to send it on the same day of every single week. You don't even necessarily have to send it every single week. Um, and you, when you, if you do take an take a break from it, you don't have to explain to people when you come back why you took a break. Nobody cares. And here's the thing: nobody noticed. So. Give yourself some grace around that. You don't have to do that perfectly either. Uh, number two, you can take longer than 24 hours to return an email. There are going to be people who vehemently disagree with that. I don't care. Your emergency is not my emergency. And if I need 26 hours, if I need 48 hours, I'm going to take it. And I'm seeing more and more people take it, which I love and I'm really happy about. Um, number three, you are allowed to choose what line of communication works best for you when it comes to clients and require your clients to use it. I prefer email communication. I like a paper trail, but also I've had situations where clients try um, to text me in the middle of the day or in the middle of a shoot. And I know that like, once I check that text and respond to it, I'm not going to be seeing it again because I'm getting too many texts. And if there's something that I need to do that's actionable from that, I need to be able to refer back to it. So I always say in those text messages, um, thank you for this. Can you please send this by email and we'll get it taken care of there. I redirect them back to email. And if it's actually important, they will do the email route. If it's not that important, they'll forget about it. And that's fine too. So you can pick a line of communication and tell your clients, this is how we communicate within my services. It Pick something that works best for the back end of your business so that things don't fall through the cracks. That's why it's so important. You need a system set up for you so that things don't fall through the cracks. And you can explain that to your clients. We do, the, we do it this way here because this makes sure you get what you need as my client. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Like, follow, subscribe, all of that fun, good stuff. Come back for more. If you have questions, drop them in the comments. I'm always happy to make video about whatever you want. <laughs>